let me find my position. Happy Monday. Bye. And one more. All right. Let's keep our arms up in this reach. Come up on your toes if you can. It was a little early for that balance there. <laughs> so stand close to your chair. Guys, let's go again with the arms. Oh. And one more. Let's do some shoulder shrugs. Pull those shoulders up and tuck it into our back pocket. Two, three, four. And I'm still kind of marching with my legs in and that lower body worked up as well, but I'm really kind of focusing right now on posture and shoulder, warming our shoulders up. So let's go ahead and do the little toes. These will help get your shoulders squared right up to a good posture. And I can keep the shoulder blades together to the best I can. And everybody look at your posture. It's all on point. <laughs> if you're feeling like you're um, kind of doing this throughout the day and shrugging a little bit, get bring your toes up and do the few of these. This will help pull you into that good posture. All right, there's our last one. Now let's do a So just another disclaimer, it's recording me. I know I haven't trained this far back. <laughs> I feel so far away from you all. All right, let's reverse direction. Just gonna grease in the gears here. I still go off of my notes too, so I have to glance. <laughs> All right, let's do our side to side. I'm gonna start swinging those arms. So we're not folding, we're just moving. So this isn't a stretch. This is that one where you reach over your cat and get the remote off of the table. <laughs> Trying not to disturb them. And swinging those arms, so we're warming up our hips and knees, our shoulders. Okay, bringing them legs in. Do some chin tucks. So I always think it's like a throw. Just warming up those neck. All right. The best of your ability. We all have our neck is one of those other parts of our body, like our knees and hips, that we use a lot. <laughs> Let's go into half squat. So be uh, quite close to your chair. We're just going to warm up. So we're not going all the way down. We're going to swing go down and back up. Just a little half squat. And do you want to bring those arms out? Then remember to breathe in and out. Find a good tempo with the breath work. All good. And as we move our upper and lower body together, we start warming up faster. Now we're going to come up onto our toes and then down to our half squat. Swing toe raise. If you need to bring your arms out to the side for better balance like that, Feel free to do that. Warming up those legs. Are you feeling it? I am. One more. There are two tabs. And swinging our arms. Reach. And breathing in and out. Looking good. Uh, 
heat wave is on its way. If you haven't heard, <laughs> I'm kind of a weather nerd, so I've been watching it for a while, and everything's aligning for skipping spring and going right to summer. <laughs> All right, let's step to the side and bring those arms up, warm your shoulders up. I love the, the heat, but I don't know if I'm ready for that. I had the heater on yesterday because I cried uncle. It was too cold for two days. And now I, I have to like save that cool air. <laughs> All right, bring those arms up. And bring those arms down, press down. We're working all three angles of our shoulder rotation. Oh, we'll work the fourth one, which is behind us a little bit here too. And so we're going, I'm turning to the side so you can let's step back and press back. Trying to remember that we work all sides of our body in front, Side and back. Anterior, posterior, and I, I don't remember what the transverse. <laughs> Let's start marching. Everybody's feeling a little bit more ready for our get that heart rate up now. Just stay in front of see my nose. I need a hazard somewhere. <laughs> okay. Let's march out. We're going to work those inner thigh muscles. Remember to bring it in and out. Keep those legs wide as you can and bring those knees up. Just on my tippy toes, and you you can put the whole foot down, but the tippy toes is firing up my hamstring and uh, calf muscles. In and out. Bring it down. Push those arms out. See if I can find the tempo. I'm gonna get the arms and legs before I do any kind of sudden movement. Push out and in. We're just pressing out in front of us. Step it out and bring it in. And this spring, we're going to bring our elbow to our knees. So we're in this march like this. This subtle. Get those oblique muscles engaged here. Breathe in and out. Now to reach. We're going to drop the knee. I'm just turning to the side so you can see. Hamstring curl and keep that reach. We'll include both hands. Arms. All right, everybody feeling good? I've been having muscle cramps in both legs, low back pain, and I took it easy this weekend. I was trying to rest, but no, my body doesn't like that. Sedentary doesn't work for me anymore. All right, we're going to go back up to our knees. Good, nice transition. And march it out. Give those hips a minute. Pump those arms up. Right, keep an arm straight up.
So we're working our posterior muscle groups, hamstring and triceps. Bring that heel up as, as high as you're comfortable, trying to kick your rear. I have a little wider seat with my legs, a little bit of a squat, and I'm hinging forward. I'll turn to the side. This is going to be really good balance as I'm moving my body side to side. All right, squeeze those muscles out. Okay, let's go ahead, we're gonna transition to our knees. Let's see if we can do it. There, yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> but anytime, this is uh, fatiguing to your low back or hips. Just go back into a march or a side step. Stop this movement and just march it out. Keep the body moving. Breathe in and out. Remember not to hold your breath. Let's go into our hamstring curl. We can do it. There we go. My. I have a personal trainer and a mentor I've worked with for years, but we now live states apart. He's in Alaska. And he still does uh, cardio videos and posts them. <laughs> and one of the videos he does, if you could hear him, he wasn't talking to the audience. He's like, that's crazy. He's like, trying to catch his breath. <laughs> I was pretty funny, but it's true. <laughs> he caught himself holding his breath. <laughs> All right. And bring those knees up. And we're gonna do bicep curls. I just had to find that rhythm. All right. So this is working the posterior, the front, our bicep and our quads. All right, marching up. We're gonna give our hips a little rest and we'll work on our upper body and our shoulders. Get those arms pumping. We're gonna pump them a little faster if you need if you're comfortable. Bring those legs out. Okay, keep the leg for there and we're going to push the arms in. Bring them in, keep the arms in the out position. Push, push, and breathe. Let's see if we can add our toe taps in the front, keeping those arms. This is patting the head and rubbing the belly. Arms in the front. You feeling it? Warming them up. <laughs> And you can bring that heel. All right, let's move the arms. We're going to go up. Now I'm doing some fairly quick bounce pumps, but you do what's most comfortable for you. Okay, keep the feet and drop those arms. Give those shoulders a little break, but keep them swinging. And breathe in and out. All right. So we're kind of tapping in the frontal part. Let's go to the side. Shifting that body weight. Now that's add, we're going to pump our biceps. Photo shoot after this, so we need that muscle pump. It always gets fluid to gather around your muscles, so that's how you have like transient. You see those people that photograph their muscles. <laughs> All right, tap in the front. Keep those biceps if you can. This is a little bit of that cognitive brain and body work. All right, pump those arms. Give them a break. And 
out to the side. Breathing in and out. Now we're going to switch gears. Instead of going like this, we're going to tap to the side. There we go. We'll bring those arms out. We're going to swim. So we're swimming out in front. Swim up. All right. You guys looking good. Let's swim out. I'm stepping back because nobody's moving forward if you're comfortable with it. So swim, and we're going to kind of like a steam forward. See how I'm kind of coming forward? Hold it here. And then let's do this. Nice and slow back and swim up as you do this. All right, let's hold this. Bring those arms down. Give those shoulders a break. You feeling it? If it's ever too much, remember to just bring those arms down and do a march. We're going to do that again. I'm just going to let our arms recover. Breathe in and out. I'm going to get a sip of water. I'm going to try to keep my body moving as I do that. Feel free at any time to sip on water and breathe. Breathe in and out. So this is kind of interval training. We brought our heart rate up, and now we're letting it come down a little bit, and then we can bring it back up. Not only is that great cardio, but it's also exercising your heart and lung muscles, so giving them some strength, because those are muscles as well. All right, everybody, let's get back to the side step. And swim those arms. We're staying here for a second until we get the rhythm. And if you're comfortable going forward, go in the line of your chair if you need to grab onto it. So I'm stepping up. Then I'm going to hold it here for a minute just to get my bearing. Now I'm going to swim up and go back. A little cognitive exercise as well. And I'm going to stop here. Bring the front back in front. And hold it when I'm breathing in and out. Ready? We're going forward again. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Got to put the pedal to the metal again. And we're going to hold it right here for a second. Bring those arms up over the head and we'll sit back. Good job. And bring those arms into the front. We'll stay put for a second here. Breathe in and out. Let's go forward. Good. Hold it here. Now bring those arms up and then we'll go back. I like to give a little bit of a few counts in between transitions so that your brain and your body connect so that we don't get the walls. <laughs> All right, bridge it out. And it can be frustrating as you see me up here sometimes not getting that transition. The brain's just not clicking. That's okay. That's perfectly normal. But what we're doing is including cognitive exercises with physical exercise. That's only going to increase your ability to do that switch in between um, more so. Comes in handy when you're driving these days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> got a turn signal on. That person tried to slow down. I think I can go. Oh, no, All right. Let's go back to our knees, our quads, and hamstrings. So up.
And remember to try to breathe with a good tempo. Everybody's doing great. Feeling great. I'm feeling better now that I'm here and moving and with all you all. So I hope that's the same for you. <laughs> Let's go into our hamstring. Nice. Then we're just going to run through this routine, right? Shorten the reps, keep that heart rate up, and get that brain working a little bit faster. And we're pushing through or powering towards the end of this harder part of the workout. So let's go up with our knees and hamstrings. We're going up to the knees. And hamstrings. And knees. Going into hamstrings. Knees. Good job, hamstring. Up to the knees. Hamstring and knee. It's okay. I'll keep it with this count of two. One, two, switch. One, two, switch. One, two, one, two. All right. We'll do one more. And then we'll march it out after this. Okay. March it out. How do you feel? <laughs> so I started. It. Went through several sets of that. Then I switched to counts of four with each movement, and then quickly went into counts of two. And so that the brain is working hard, in which you notice your heart rate comes up. And that's when you might find yourself holding your breath because you're concentrating. So remember to breathe through all of this in and out. All right. Let's just to finish with some. I'm just hitting every part of the body today, the shoulders, the hips, the knees. Let's drag the truck. Get that tibialis anterior muscle fired up. All right, let's switch sides. I kind of just keep the arms going and get the feet switched around. All right. Now let's switch sides and we're going to move the foot side to side with the like a conventional way for a movement. To the best of your ability. So your range of motion may be different than mine or the person next to you, and that's okay. As I talk, I'm just taking your mind off of the burn. You might be feeling it. <laughs> All right, let's switch sides. I'm gonna to have to march it out a little bit. There we go. <laughs> By doing that, it helps get that blood to kind of shift back out of the tibia muscles. All right, good job. Let's go into a, a sip of water and then we'll start cooling our bodies down. Breathing in and out. Let's tap our toes down. We do start with this. And we tend to bring it back the speed up. Now we're going to slow it down. And heels up. And bring those arms up over your head. Breathe in and out. Let's do another one. Up. And down. One more. I don't like uh, even numbers. I tend to go odd in my art <laughs> When I grocery shopping, I don't buy two cans of something. It's always three. <laughs> you don't get to know me a little too much, maybe, but. <laughs> All right, slowly. We're not swimming like we were earlier, but just kind of re engaging these muscles. 
step side to side. Let's just switch that nice and slow. Remember to breathe in. Roll those shoulders back. And forward. I'm going to grab our balance. Yeah, there we go. Let's just do a little finger fling before we get into that. Yeah. It really doesn't matter where you put your arms, but it needs to stand up. And now if you want to do one finger at a time. And then swivel like you're crunching up paper. And now let's get those wrist curls. I'm just doing a few little toe raises if you're comfortable. And then reverse the wrist curl, bring those shoulders down. All right. So this video here, I'm gonna watch it. You'll probably see this much of me for 90% of the time. I really try. I'm going to turn this down just so that we can really concentrate on our balance work. So have a chair close by. There we go. And always rely on that. So, I really enjoyed this whole getting on our tippy toes and walking around our chair, stopping, turning around, and going back, and then we'll do our heels. So, let's do as much as you can come up on your toes. Is that anytime you need to put your heels down, do so. Stay close to your chair so that if you get the wobbles, you can. Grab it or sit on it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Remembering to breathe in and out. Let's not hold our breath. I keep one hand along the chair. Nice, and then come back around. If you're uncomfortable with the movement part and you stay standing, do some toe raises. That'll help. All right, nice. Now we'll march that out a little bit and we'll get up on our heels. Pull that belly button towards the spine. That helps give you some of that lower lumbar, the low back support. You need to put your hand out to the side. That's going to give you the best platform for stability and balance. And then I'm turning around and going the other way. So we're working on balance, which helps with activities of daily life, but I don't think you tend to walk in public on your heels like that. So our actions are improving one part of our body. A lot of times my movements are movements that are mimicking what you do in everyday life, but uh, the tippy toes tend to be more common than like the heel, unless you're oh, falling back, but you got yourself because you know how to pull that and shift forward. Let's do our heel toe. So um, heel to toe, stand by your chair. You need to just go a little bit ahead. And then arms can be out to the side for full balance. And then we're gonna turn around and go back. I'm going to come to the other side of my chair so I can pull my nose better. Right. Let's go ahead and do one leg stands. So have your chair close by um, if you want to challenge yourself by letting go and seeing how much you can do, or you might need to grab the chair or put your foot down. I'm just lifting my foot up this high if you want to challenge yourself by bringing your foot up higher, or if you need to bring your arms out to the side. Relax that stance, but once you find your balance, try to relax it. Flatten it out. Breath in and out. Let's do the other side. There we go. 
And we tend to have dominant sides of our body. Like if you have a dominant hand that you use, oftentimes that's going to be the dominant side. So you might find that your balance is uh, better on one side than the other. Breathing in and out, set that foot down. And then, and I'm going to be by my chair, but we're going to do what the wind is blowing us forward and backwards. So trying to keep that body straight and what's moving is like at the ankles. Which you can see like dancers and y'all like ones who are really inspired by Michael Jackson that can do like the stuff where they go way back or way forward and I don't know how. <laughs> this is the extent I can do these ankle swings. Breathing in. And out, let's go side to side. So kind of shifting that weight. And then you bring your feet closer together, it's going to make it more difficult. Wider, the further you go, it's going to give you more stability. So you work within your comfort zone there. As those arms come closer to the body, it narrows your support. So it's going to make it more difficult. Okay. And we'll go into our sit to stand. Have your weights ready. Take a sip of water and then you're sit down. If you shed a layer, you might want to add it. I don't have my. Timer. So as you're getting a sip of water and getting situated, get my timer for our stretches. There we go. Everybody here has done these. I'm getting ready to do a, a write up on my business Facebook page about sit to stand and the benefits and the various ways that we can do them and why we want to do them. And so I thought I should videotape myself doing them. It's being done for me right now. <laughs> All right, so remember, uh, you can have your hands in front of your body this way, or if you need the assistance of the chair, use the side of the chair, avoid pushing down on your legs so that you're making it, that makes it harder for yourself. We're going to come straight up, and as you come up, try to squeeze your glute, your butt muscles. Take a deep breath in, and then with as much control, sit back down. Let your body touch the chair completely, and then we come back up like we're driving the ground away from our body. Are we ready? All right, so we're going to push up, squeeze, and down. I tend to take a breath in, and then once I squeeze, I exhale as I sit down. Up. Nice. You get control back there. Halfway there. And as you sit down, you leave with your rump. They're going to push it out. That's so this is a proper form way to do a squat. And I, it's really hard to teach people who haven't done, who are trying to do a proper squat. So we usually always go to a sit to stand so they get that feeling. You want to lean with your glutes when you're doing that. Do one more push it in. And down. All right, let's put on our legs. We'll do our lower body first. And I've heard a few of you have increased your weight load a little bit, and that's great. If some of you are on the fence of, oh, should I, should I not? Just go one little weight, you know, per side, one little, whatever those things are, <laughs> uh, and give that a try. Back in the 70s, 80s, if, if, if any of you are vegetarian or I apologize for this, but as a child, what they would do in the farm, you know, uh, beef, and cattle before they 
harvested them for us to eat, they would feed them the, the magnet like that. And then what that does is goes into their body and collects all the metal and stuff. So every time I see that, I think of that as like a kid. They used to have them sitting on the counters and stuff. <laughs> so I would love to have that memory gone, but then you see something that's like, oh, dang, that looks just like those magnets. So that's a horrible memory. So <laughs> all right. We're gonna stand up, I'm gonna switch this over, and... So why is, all right, we did our scissors stand. Let's stand up and we'll do our toe raises. If you want to do any of these from the seated position, you can, and if you want me to show you, like, uh, we can do seated toe raises. Um, for, I think most of this group does it from the standing position. And then remember to use your chair. Uh, now we're kind of stepping away from balance. We're improving our balance by strengthening our muscles, but the goal here is to isolate the muscle group we're working. So I encourage you to hold on to your chair, the back of the chair. I might move to the side and hold on with one hand for demonstration purposes. But good form is this right here. And drive your feet up. Here we go, two. <laughs> And breathe. Remember to breathe as we go through these exercises as well. And control, control those heels down. Press them up and then fight, fight, fight. This is where we're building that veins muscle. Let's go ahead and do our adductor muscles. If you can't see me, let me know, but I think you all are going to know what we're doing here. Okay. Bring our foot up to the side and back down. So the movement back towards your body should be slower than the movement going away from your body, just because we want to fight that weight. Nice. Nine. One more and ten. You might feel it in the stance leg, and that's perfectly normal. So the leg that you were standing on, but like mine was fired up too. And I'm pulling my core in, trying to get good form and driving that leg up. And we don't need to go too far up. Um, if, if you have that in you, but it's not, it's the act of coming up to about here, stopping and then letting that weight drive the leg back down. Nice. Remember, if anybody gets too hot, we do have fans around, us, one in the back for here, and feel free to turn those on at any time. There's our last one. Remembering to breathe in and out as we do this. The temperatures will start to come up, so we will want to be more aware of where our cool sources are. <laughs> so if you, if you know you might want to use a fan, um, Go up and make sure, you know, make sure to plug in and everything before class and then turn it on when you're ready for it. Um, that would make sure that nobody overheats. If I feel like y'all are overheating, I'll run down and turn it on full blast to hit you with some cool air, but I'll let y'all do that. <laughs> yes. All right, here's our hip extenders. Driving that heel back, trying to stay within line of our body, but if, if your leg wants to go out at an angle, that's okay. Cool. Same thing, it can go out uh, faster than it comes toward the body. And eight. Switch sides. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do for a low back fatigue, but I'll just tell you it's, it's pretty mad at me right now. 
There we go. This one is not stopping me, and that's the that's the goal. It's it's not in like shooting pains where it's making me drop to my knees. It's just really uncomfortable and kind of tight in there. So I'm working through it, hoping this stuff will help loosen up some of those tight muscles. One more. That means you have me recorded. You'll be able to find out if I'm counting right. I know I'm not. I always throw one in for good measure just in case. <laughs> Okay, we're going to do our curls like this. So try to keep those knees in line with each other, like that. So I don't have my touch to do that. I don't don't have the skills to keep it in order there. Breathing in and uh, trying to pair that breathing with your tempo or your movement might help if you're catching yourself holding your breath. And then bring that heel up towards the butt and slowly bring it down. These are our knee flexor muscles. All right, let's switch side. One caution in regards to adding weight if you're at a comfortable weight and you don't want to add it or you're on the sense of adding weight is if some of these exercises we're doing here kind of aggravate some arthritis in the knees the goal is that what we're doing will help alleviate that discomfort but that's not the reality so if you're concerned about that or you've increased your weight and you're noticing some uh, discomfort then go back down to a comfortable weight it's we increase the weight as long as your body tolerates it. Otherwise, work within a range of um, your body's going to tolerate that you'll have a better outcome. <laughs> pain isn't, nobody should be living in pain every single day. If we can prevent that, that's what I want. <laughs> so those are just a few things in both the upper and lower body. But I know that with the knees, sometimes the increase of weight in doing something like this or the seated knee extension that we'll do next is where the aggravation can happen. All right. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down. And with this, the proper form of the knee extension is to try to be as far back in your seat as you can, trying to have as much of this leg uh, touching the edge of the seat that gives it more stability. I'll tell you from my body size, these chairs are just a little bit too short. So uh, I could, I would feel more beneficial if I had a little more seat under there, but I'm not currently in 40 pounds. So that, you know, <laughs> but holding on to the side of your chair, sitting upright, or even having, you know, letting your whole body kind of use that chair as a support system. And we're working our quadricep muscle here. And pair your breathing with your tempo. So I usually breathe in and then out. And nice and slow and control. If you put your hand on the leg you're working, you'll feel those muscles engage and flex. All right. Switch sides. <laughs> Good. And then as you see, uh, I'm not putting my foot down. I was just challenging that muscle a little bit more, but if you need that little micro break in between, feel free to let that foot touch the floor between, before you go to your next curl. And that'll give it just enough rest to get that good form. Breathing in and out. Okay, so now we'll take our ankle weights off.
We'll finish off with our leg work, our heel raises. So this is the opposite. I like to come a little bit forward in my seat to give myself more range of motion. And having your feet firmly planted on the floor, pretty much your feet are as wide as your knees, which then line up with your hips and shoulders. We're going to pull our toes towards our knees, driving those heels into the floor if you can, and then slowly drop those toes and then we'll pull them up. Well, I hear your conversation. I use just the I use the ankle weights or the wrist weights for both the, my ankles and my upper body, and that's okay. That's what I because I do so much strength training. By the end of the week, if I am not cautious of that, I might be I wear myself out. <laughs> Even those little changes. So whatever works best for you. That's advice. All right, last one. All right, so um, we'll do our upper body, and this one you can do um, standing or seated. So if you, I'm going to do it from the seated position, but if you want to stand up, feel free. Just remember to give yourself that real good support, a little wider stance with your body, hold the core in. Okay. So if you're sitting, you can scoot your body all the way back in the chair so that you have good uh, uh, form. We're doing our one-arm raises, so our thumb is pointing up, our palm is facing in. I like to start with my hand right about my knee, bring it up just to about shoulder height, and then a little bit slower. So going up is going to be the faster. And then when we fight the gravity is a little bit slower. Breathing in and out. And so remember, these muscle groups we're strengthening. These are the front deltoid muscles. There's other, but the main muscle group are the front deltoid, reaching and grabbing stuff off shelves. Um, this, this should help with that. Pulling that giant jar of pickles off the shelf and down to the counter. Washing your hair, things like that. I hate washing my hair. <laughs> There's a lot there. I don't know. I don't wear it down too often, but if I have, you might have seen it. It's a chore. <laughs> but otherwise, it's some, you know, I just chain it up and I'm good to go. But if that, I, I had a, for a switch arms, all the ways that I raised in my family. So I helped raise my sister's kids and my dad's kids and they were all boys and if any of you raised boys and might have had that same bath time and shower time it wasn't really their thing they didn't mind smelling like cheese and mud and whatever <laughs> and so my partner gives me a hard time now and I when I have to wash my hair he's like hey <laughs> And with this exercise, like any exercise we're doing, we want to stay within full range of motion to the best of your ability. So you might start to feel some discomfort getting too far up here in this range. Just go to where that discomfort doesn't happen. So you might only be able to come up to this height. And that's okay. Work within your range so that uh, you don't get pain. Yeah. All right. Now we're going to do the opposite of our front deltoid is our rear deltoid, so that's our row. And if you're sitting and you're going to hinge your body forward, give yourself some good, um, you know, nice amount of chair underneath you so you don't slip off. Thumb up, palms in, and then pull that up straight back. And trying to keep that elbow close to your body so as you pull back, you almost feel that arm rubbing against your body. It's going to isolate those rear uh, muscles more. So then if your arm is kind of floating off to the side a little bit. And I teach the same form that we do in here on the machines. It, it doesn't change. It's the same kind of concept, same idea.
Nice. One more. Wait that. Okay, we'll switch that. Thumb up, palm facing in, and pull that elbow straight back. Breathing in and out. Breath in and out. Carry your breathing with your movement. That I feel the best way to remember your breath work. We'll do one more. Okay. Now we'll do our bicep curls. So our palms are facing up. I can scoot forward just a little bit so my arms can go all the way down and have that full range of motion. I'm locking my elbows toward, to my body if I can, like trying to hold them there and then pulling those palms towards your shoulders. And then this is where we got to fight that gravity down. And there's two. And breathe in and out. And there's six. And seven. They're looking good. Nine. And 10. All right, let's work the opposites. Right step muscles. So these muscles are what help us get ourselves up and down out of the chair, out of bed, pushing our, when we have to push our body weight up, these muscles get engaged. So it's an important exercise, but it's a harder one to do. Uh, with bicep curls can be easy, but the tricep kickback can be a little bit more difficult. So I like to get in the position like I'm doing a row. I'll pull my hand to my hip, and then I do my kickback there. Trying to tuck that elbow close to your body again. And then I squeeze at this motion here, I squeeze at the top of the muscle, what is that mind to muscle. So you might not know, well, what is she squeezing? I'm not sure which one it is. It's the tricep muscle, I try to mind to muscle. I think of that muscle in this up position right here and give it a little squeeze. If you get out into the garden and you do any kind of digging or pulling weeds, these muscles also help with that. One more. Switch that. Keep that elbow close to your body and kick it back. Tricep kick back. Two. And then as you're sitting, one thing to try to keep in alignment also is your um, spine. And so once I get into my, I start doing my repetitions, like I have to look up at you all, but if you're sitting upright and look straight forward so you have a neutral neck, if you're hunched over like, our, you know, shifting forward, try to look down at the floor so that your chin is not, coming up or down, so you have a nice neutral spine. We don't want to build up a muscle group and then make another one get angry with us, which would be our neck and shoulders. Fast, breathing in and out. All right, let's take our weights off and we'll get into our stretching. And Feel free to stand up for these stretches. I'm going to do the lower leg one from the chair.
Alright. So remember, anytime we're doing the weights or stretching and you feel like we need to get a sip of water, don't, don't skip it. Just do it. That's your body telling you something. Alright, so I'm going to move forward a little bit to get a little range of motion. We're going to do our calf stretch. So our body's going to be upright. Pull that toe towards your knee and then um, if you don't feel that calf right there, drive that heel into the floor. I felt it. Breathing in and out. All right, with the breath in and out, let's relax that stretch and come out to the other side. Getting a good stretch through there. Yeah, I'm actually feeling it in the tibia area as well. So. Breath in and out, release that stretch. And now we'll attempt to stretch the opposite, which is the soleus. So we're going to bring our foot back underneath. I drive that heel down, and I have to shift forward. Once I do that, I can feel that um, stretch. And I found that the opposite leg going a little bit further forward was more, when I have it like this, I don't feel it as much, but it might be you have to play with it around with your, how your body works. Like the bicep stretch, when we have to find that stretch. Breathe in and out, let's switch sides. The trick is keeping that heel planted with the foot that's going underneath your chair will help pull that muscle into place for a good stretch. And breathing in and out. Always important, but we always need a reminder like my trainer. <laughs> All right, release that stretch, and now we're going to stretch our inner thigh. So we'll bring one leg off to the side. I pull the toe towards me. I like to shift to the side, and then go down a little bit, and bam, there we go. I feel that inner thigh muscle stretch. Doesn't take much for me. If you dance or swim or do yoga or Pilates, you might have more flexibility and a real good stretch. If you lift weights and walk around like a Neanderthal like me, you might feel it right away. All right, breath in and out. We'll release that stretch. And we'll breathe and breathe through this process. All right, release that stretch. We're just going to our quad stretch. And the trick here is to really get that knee pointed down and drive it towards the floor. And then uh, if you're comfortable bringing that arm up, it's going to be a longer stretch so you'll feel it right Take a breath in and out and release that. Switch sides. Drive that knee down. Nice. The bed looking good. All right, breath in. And out, release that stretch. Back to the hamstring. We're gonna shift our body forward and you should feel that stretch pretty quickly. Breath in and out, we'll switch sides. Oh yeah, I'm feeling this one here. 
I do want to say avoid pushing down on that leg. Um, I have my hand just resting on it, but to try to just even erase that, put your hands on the opposite leg. So we want to avoid pushing. That's a special joint there. We all know that you might aggravate it <laughs> Un unknowingly by doing a stretch. All right, release that. Uh, pump those toes up and down. I'm wiggling them inside my shoes. Uh, and we'll pump them up and down, wiggle the toes, and then twirl. About five rotations one way, five rotations the other way. And then uh, you're welcome to stay seated for the upper body stretching, but I'm going to stand up a little bit. Take a motion. And we'll go ahead and we're going to stretch our front deltoid muscles by taking our arms down, press down, and then out. And remember to breathe. In and out. Right. Looking good. All right, and then in and out. Release that stretch, and now we'll do our rear deltoid stretch. Again, friendly reminder: try not to push on your elbow with this stretch. Go between the joints. So. I like to go between the elbow and wrist, but some might like to go between the shoulder and elbow. It's whenever you get this good stretch here, pulling that arm across the front of your body. You should feel this in the shoulder and around to the upper part of your back. Breathe in and out, release that. When we hug ourselves at the end, that's the same. That's another way of doing the same stretch. So if you're at home and that your shoulders and upper back are pretty stiff and you've done this stretch but you're like I want to do one more just hug yourself and hold it <laughs> you'll do more than just stretch those back muscles breath in and out let's do our bicep so we're going to press back and then I have to kind of go up a little bit and breathing in and I never stop breathing. All right, breath in and out, relax that, and then we'll do our tricep stretch. So by having the hand here to sit, sit coming up. All right, breath in and out, release that stretch, and we'll switch sides. That is all still up there. <laughs> okay, breathe down, and we'll go ahead and go in for a hug. And I'm going to kind of wiggle my fingers and squeeze. Couple deep breaths, and then we'll come around to our next side here. Please. All right. Congratulations. You made it through Monday morning with me. <laughs>